for more on this, I'm joined by Jeffrey Ball. He's a scholar in residence at Stanford University at the Styler Taylor Center for Energy Policy and Finance and also a columnist for the New Republic. Welcome to the show. Let me start with this solar battle. battle. We heard basically both sides. The Americans think that they're right. Chinese think they're, they're right as well. But there's a deal actually in the works that might actually solve all of this, right? Yeah, it'll be fascinating to watch. You know, there's precedent actually for a deal like this, and that is in Europe. Um, there has been essentially a three-way fight going on between the United States and China and between the European Union and China over solar panels. It's kind of interesting. I don't think many people would have thought five years ago that uh, the solar energy industry would be big enough to spark an international trade war, but that's what's happened. In any event, uh, there was a deal uh, that was recently inked between the European Union and China, and it will be fascinating to see whether something like that takes shape in the U.S. Um, I think it's worth noting that there's been discussion on the part of the uh, trade association that you mentioned in your report for a while now. And so um, the jury's still out, I think, on whether uh, the association's going to be able to get everyone together to sign a deal. But it's certainly quite interesting. The decision by the United States uh, International Trade Commission uh, that basically says that this battle can sort of go on, how much of an impact might that have on a potential deal? Well, the, the, the decision today, I think, probably doesn't affect the likelihood of the deal, except insofar as it puts heat, puts heat on the players, those, those players who don't like the decision, who want a deal. So there, there, there's pressure in terms of time. I don't suspect that the decision today was much of a surprise to a lot of people. So, you know, again, the, the, the talking about a deal has been in the works for a while. I, I was talking to Daniel, the, the, our reporter who was doing the first story, and we had a nice yeah. chat about this, about... In reality, a lot of the U.S. manufacturers and resellers, they want to deal on this as well, don't they? Because it's good for them. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, I think, I think one of the things that's so fascinating about this is that the solar industry is growing up. And like all industries that grow up, the solar industry is now getting to a point where it's not one monolithic industry. It's an industry that's, that's split in many different ways. It's split uh, within the United States in terms of different factions. And it's certainly split among countries between the United States and China, for instance. And, and to your point, what you see happening in the United States right now um, is that there's real division among different players within this industry about what is best for them. So in fact, w what you're seeing is that the companies that manufacture solar panels in the United States, and there are frankly not a lot of factories left that manufacture solar panels in the United States, but those countries tend to be the ones that are supporting these tariffs because, of course, these tariffs would make it more expensive to import solar panels from, from China and from Taiwan. Um, but the companies that do other things in the solar industry, for instance, installing solar panels or making things uh, other than the panels themselves, are actually opposed to these tariffs because um, to the extent that anything like a tariff raises the price of a solar panel that's imported, and a lot of the panels that are installed in this country uh, are imported, then that raises the price that consumers have to pay for the panels. And so the companies that are in the business of installing these panels on your rooftop, for instance, would just assume that these panels be as cheap as possible because it'll get them more customers. Um, Jeff, I, it, Jeff, it goes I, to an Jeff I want to go, I want to reference back to the deal sure. you mentioned earlier with Europe. That deal yeah. in particular, it had limitations on, on the quantity of products that would be shipped into Europe, and it also had limitations on the amount of price that they could sell it for. Might we see something very similar to that? Yeah, you know, th that's certainly an interesting template. As you said, what, it, what that deal did, um, importantly, was put a ceiling on the volume of solar panels that, from China that could be exported to the European Union and put a floor on the price. That is, Chinese uh, companies couldn't sell for l uh, lower than a certain amount. Um, I think the, the calculus there is that, um, is that they, will, they will be able to make more money in terms of uh, selling for a higher price than they otherwise might. Now, I don't know that there's any reason to think that that couldn't happen here, but it's also not clear that that's what the uh, Solar Association is talking about, um, and, and they're pretty mum on exactly what they're saying. I, I, I do think it's worth saying, noting that what, what you quoted them saying suggests that there's a long road between now and an actual deal. There are a lot of uh, cats that need to be herded here. Where, you know, this is a tough question, where is the negotiation taking place? Is it company to company? Is it mid-level government officials? Or does it go to the highest level of government officials? Well, I don't know, in point of fact, the answer to that question. It's certainly taking place among company officials. 
Um, and you know, interestingly, it's, it's probably taking place within companies themselves too, because one of the things that's happening is that this industry is globalizing. And so you know, it, as these companies become global themselves, it's not actually entirely clear where even a single company's interest lies. Um, certainly there are discussions taking place among government officials. Um, uh, I, I do think it's important to remember that the solar industry is a relatively small industry, for instance, in the context of the energy industry writ large. And so one could assume that, uh, for instance, oil negotiations probably um, occupy a greater percentage of the time of government officials than solar negotiations. But, you know, administrations in both countries have made a big deal out of this fight. And, um, and, uh, and so I think it's fair to say that at the, at the highest levels, people are watching this. I'm going to ask you to forecast what's the likelihood of a deal or a positive outcome? Well, I, I, I'm not sure how clear my crystal ball is, but I think, I think if you look at history, history suggests that um, these tariff disputes end up moving toward deals. And in particular, uh, the history of this solar dispute uh, internationally suggests um, particularly with regard to Europe, that these things end up moving toward deals. I, I, I do think that, that you're starting to hear louder voices um, for a deal than for a continued fight. And so I suspect that that's where the momentum goes. Um, but I don't think it's at all clear what a deal looks like. Uh, and I also don't think it's at all clear how quickly a deal gets done. So it's conceivable uh, that these tariffs, um, if they get input, uh, put, put in place, could, could have some impact on the industry before a deal gets done. Jeff Ball, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us from Stanford University.